Metal monthly, metal monthly, hey, hey, hey. Metal monthly, metal monthly, new metal, metal monthly. No, new metal. Howdy, banger pals, Blaine Smith, welcoming you new to another Metal Monthly, banger's monthly look at what's coming out in metal releases. If you're new here, the way things work is I find you the five best underground metal albums coming out every single month, and normally I haven't lost my voice because normally it's not my birthday, so I didn't do a crazy stream marathon over the weekend where I talked for almost 50 hours straight. Regardless, I do have five great albums for you, and before we get to that, I have a list of some of the big, noteworthy new releases coming out, and then we'll get on to my picks. I hope you're fattened up because we're getting into the lean summer months, July 5th. We've got Cryptos releasing Decimator on AFM, Satan Satyrs releasing After Dark on TP, and Sumac releasing the Keeper's Tongue EP on Thrill Jockey. What's coming out July 12th? Not a whole lot. We've got Seth releasing La France du Moidoui on Season of Mist. July 19th, you've got Deep Purple releasing Equal One on Ear Music. You've got Orange Goblin releasing Science Not Fiction on Peaceville. And Paul Diano's War Horse is releasing Paul Diano's War Horse on Brave Words. We gotta stop with the apostrophe S's band's names. I mean, what, what? Why are we doing this? It's always, regardless. Uh, July 26th, you've got Ghost releasing right here, right now, the original motion picture soundtrack on Lorna Vista, which is a fancy way of saying Ghost is releasing a live album. Harvest Man is releasing Triptych Part 1 on Neurot. Power Wolf is releasing Wake Up the Wicked on Napalm. And Banger Pals Worm Witch are releasing Worm Witch on Profound Lore. That sounds less ridiculous because there's not a person's name in the possessive there. Those are, you know, like I said, the J J July offerings and and now and now we're now we're on to my top 5 picks for best best of the underground. So my number one pick for the month is Mehemix Toba coming out on Sepulchral Voice Records July 26th. What we've got here is Chilean thrash of the blackened variety because, let's be honest, that's the type of thrash that sort of managed to translate to the taste of the 2020s. Sorry, most other thrashes. We start off with a great abstract Evo devolution cover by Bastian Velasquez. And this was an easy pick for my first spot just because of the impact I got to see in real time when my stream and I discovered this. Uh, I, I love having a little metal focus group to find bands with because you get to see the, do people vibe with this? And the speed and force these guys play with, if this doesn't make you pop off, I truly just don't understand what it is about metal that's appealing to you. I was even more delighted when I heard the full record because the only wrinkle with this style can be repetition is a potential problem, but there's enough variety in this bag that that should absolutely not be a problem for you. And everything is street legal too. They're not using any sonic diversity enhancing drugs like audio clips or interludes or guest features, you know, the things that get me all riled up. Just the boys and their chops from start to finish. I'm actually kind of surprised I hadn't heard of these guys before because Noctumber is behind some of my favorite Chilean acts, but I guess this is their first full length and I know demos are great and it's fun, but I just listen to so many records. I only really have time for full lengths. I'm a full length guy, so call me back when you finish your homework, I guess. I, I also love that Noctumbra started as the drummer of this band and is now on guitars and splitting vocal duties. You love a king going from bottom and working his way to the top janitor to CEO shit here, so enjoy. Moving on, we've got Void Witch Horror Plating Presence on Everlasting Spew Records coming out July 26th.
This Death Doom record is coming to us by way of Austin, Texas, and this Jamie Zaverza cover is very cool. Crazy and wild, abstract, but menacing and metal. Probably my favorite cover of the month. And while I am starting to get a little nervous because the Hooded Menace three-year clock is looking like it might run late for the first time. I'm relieved to have a great hunk of death doom here. Regardless, this can tide me over for a while. Completely fresh too, formed in 2021, first full length, and I don't know any of their prior work. This is a crazy level of quality to just pop out with, especially with, with the look of some of their former bands. Insert bad band photo. Sorry guys, but you know, time makes fools of us all. And while the band does evoke thoughts of Hooded Menace, they managed to do so while also crafting their own unique guitar tone without aping the signature last tone. And what I think is really cool about the tone is that it's kind of reflective of what we're seeing on the cover, whereas Hooded Menace tone fits the Spanish horror it's themed after, this has a colder and well more void -y vibe to it, much like the album cover. Further leading to that remarkable finished quality feel for a band with five songs, period, under their belt before this. There's even a cool digital vibe to things as well in like a cold wave, synth wave way where, you know, you're riding through the digital internet, neuromancer or not, like, this was recorded plugged directly into a laptop digital vibe. Good digital, good digital. Our black metal record this month, because of course black metal cannot be stopped, is Arx Arata, A Reckoning Independent, July 5th. You can always count on a black metal record regardless of how slow releases are. This one's from the UK, it's atmospheric black metal. Nemurian Visions has got a, another abstract cover for the month, I guess it's the theme. And I will say this feels a little different than a normal Blaine black metal pick. It's prettier, it's not attacking you. I don't think it's gonna be the soundtrack to anyone's suicide and it doesn't sound like it was recorded somewhere fucking haunted. But boy howdy do I enjoy it and I'm happy to break up my normal flow of records that sound like they've been dead for 30 years. Um, uh, it's sort of like what I imagine Post Black would sound like to me if I had tragically been born without a sense of taste. The <laughs> oh, got him, Post Black fucking sucks. Anyways, it's melancholic, but there's a positiveness to it, I guess, that it, it changes rather than ruins the black metal atmosphere. It's towing near the line instead of blasting clean over it and flash banging me in the face with bright ass tone. The vocals are proper though. I ain't budging there. I'm not trying to have a motherfucker sing to me. Moving on, we've got Obscene's Agony and Wounds on Nameless Grave Records coming out July 12th. This is death metal from Indianapolis, and this is another almost abstract cover. Uh, this one's by the singular Brad Moore. Loving all these Brad Moore covers we're getting lately. And these returning metal monthly features really feel like an alternate universe at the gates that went the heavier route. Not just because I still think Kyle Shaw sounds like a young Lindbergh. The music is without a doubt old school death metal, but the band will rip off into an intention stealing melodic passage. Just enough for me to conjure the word melodic in my head, but never for me to 
put it in front of death metal in the genre that they play, which is great because melodic death metal, uh, you're done. You had your run, but nobody cares anymore. I know this is quite the hot take, the hard stance for me to make if this was 10 years ago when that happened. But regardless, this feels like taking what was good about Melodeath and putting it into the style we're all vibing right now. And it's not just the melodic parts they're able to do that with as well. The album has atmosphere, but you'd never call it atmospheric. Like a ton of effort has gone into producing the album, but you'd never call it overproduced because it's, well, you know, done well. Uh, the album even closes with like piano and an audio sample over soloing, which again, sort of sounds like something I'd hate, but I don't because I don't actually hate anything. I just like good music and I don't like bad music. So if I don't like something, it's bad and you're wrong. And you can't tell me uh, no, because this it's my birthday and I'm, t I'm, I'm, I'm being ornery this month because of it. Okay, yeah, maybe not the most diverse month here at Metal Comedy Incorporated, but uh, it's July. There's not enough releases for that. You can pick either quality or diversity. What do you want? I went quality, so everything's death and blacky. But that's why we built the palette cleanse, so that we'd always have a way to wash it out, no matter how heavy things got. So, Death Racer, From Gravel to Grave, Dying Victims Productions, July 26th. Okay, so I lied, it's Austrian black and speed, sorry. It's all, it's all black and or death. Um, with the strong success of NASCAR themed I Am The Intimidator a few months, the universe cried out for balance. Thus comes an album about European motorsport and we are once again at equilibrium. Much like I Am The Intimidator, Death Racer looked back to the days of racing when dudes be dying to drive cars. Literally. And well, yes, this is black in speed, so it's a little heavier than your standard palette cleanse. It's lighter in spirit. It's not all demons and hellfire. It's just some nice casual songs about men dying in balls of fire. All right, so it's the same there too. So that doesn't track, but it's easily the most fun record being released in July. So it more than earns a spot here. And if song titles like traumatized in traffic jam ejection don't make you smile, then I don't know what to tell you. Music's crazy again, y'all. Your time's over, softies. Kendrick threw a funeral for Drake and bought, brought out Dr. Dre to dance on his grave. It's time for the return of danger. So those are my picks. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get in a pool because it's my birthday.